What's up everyone, this is Andre from Indie Arts Midwest and in this video we're going to set up a Chaos vehicle for Unreal Engine 5. I have chosen the Coral Vega from the Fallout series. You can choose whatever you want. Just keep in mind that as a disclaimer, this tutorial assumes that you, the user, have a general understanding of Blender and its interface. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll need is a Unreal reference character, which you can export from Unreal 4 or 5. I usually keep a couple around in my documents folder. I have at least three, one from Unreal 4, one from Unreal 5 male, and one Unreal 5 female. And then of course I have a blend file that usually keeps at least one of those at all times. So feel free to keep that in mind for future projects as you may need to have your Unreal character reference for many things. Jumping into the Blender side, I will now go to the world settings. I keep the unit system at metric and the unit scale at 0 0.01. Now it's ready to import the Unreal character at the correct scale. And I usually extend the view just so I can see what's going on. Import him in as an FBX file. And I'll go ahead and bring him to the center using grid snap. Great. And he's good to go. And now with our reference character imported, we can now import our vehicle. And go ahead and scale it to match about the size of what you think the Unreal character will be sitting in the seat. I had to rotate mine ni minus 90 degrees and move them around a bit. After a bit of guesstimation, I figured this was a good spot and I stuck with this scale. And also, I went ahead and hid the Unreal character from the scene. And just doing some minor object editing to ensure that the smooth edges indeed look smooth. As you can see, there's a little blemish there on the side here I needed to fix, so. After a bit of editing in the background, I got it looking good. And now we are ready to move on to the concept of separating the parts. And this is only if you have a model that was imported and not game ready, but also may or may not have its material set. So as you can see here, I am selecting all the chrome parts as a material, and this will keep things organized for me on the Unreal side as well. This also gives you a moment to properly name your materials as you see fit. 
Again, if your object is game ready, then you more than likely won't have to deal with this step. But I wanted to show just a bit of my process of separating all the different pieces. Um, normally, this isn't as complex. If I'm lucky, I can select an entire piece in one shot. In other instances, depending on how the geometry is set up, I may have to do um, multi selections, as you can see here. Um, it did take quite a bit of time, but again, it was my choice to use this model. So um, that's why I wanted to show that depending on what you choose to work on, there will be design challenges at times if it's not game ready. So um, another thing I do want to point out is this is an STL file. So that is another reason why it is a little more difficult to work with. There are some easy, some that are a bit hard. Um, I do like using STLs based on their quality, especially on the edges. So um, that's why I stuck with this model today. So once we have everything separated and then ultimately joined together as one mesh, which will be your body, you should have five components, which will be the body mesh and the wheels. By this point though, all of your materials are going to be set within your body mesh. So if you needed to select any individual parts, that would be a good place to do it. Or if you happen to use vertex groups, then that's another good way to select your individual parts. I'm an either or on that. I prefer the materials. Um, it used to be that I would prefer the vertex groups, but now that we've been able to rule that out for non-armature based vehicles, um, it's just the best route for me to go. But if I were utilizing an armature, then I would definitely go with vertex groups, depending on the part of the car that I wanted to control. So um, that's just something to keep in mind for future. I did leave a part underneath the vehicle unanimated purposely, um, since we're just doing a completely simple vehicle setup. So I will now separate each wheel individually. And they will need to have their own origins properly centered. Specifically in a way that allows them to rotate and look good doing it. So sometimes just setting origin to geometry might not always be the case if the geometry is a bit um, wonky and has a lot of triangles like this one does. Um, in random areas. As you can see here, I tried to select this one side and then I thought, no, maybe that's not going to be a good representation of the wheel center. So then I figured I'll do the outside of the wheels, which does in a way kind of also uh, give the center, I'm hoping, for the radius of the wheel. But as I said, since the triangles are um, random at, in certain parts of these wheels, then that might affect the radius, as you will see on the Unreal side. Um, not a big deal, just something that I wanted to point out, that ensuring that the proper center for these wheels is extremely important. Otherwise, you'll get some wobble that you most definitely won't want. As you can see here, I uh, missed a chunk, so I have to join that back together and then go back in and mesh clean up so that I can merge by distance and then do a edge split to put it back. I use edge split a lot um, in my editing process because it just helps clean things up for me. Um, so I do recommend if you know what I'm talking about or look into it. There are plenty of Blender tutorials that talk about edge split and how helpful it is. There are other ways to get around um, certain aspects of that, but I just prefer using that because it's very quick.
So um, now that that wheel is fixed and the origin is now set to the center selected radius, So I don't know if this is the absolute technique, but one thing I like to do is line the wheels up on the x-axis at their centers, which is why it was so important for me to get the wheel centers early on so that I could know where they will align on this axis. So again, this isn't a concrete fact as to how it's supposed to be done. It's just something that I recall lining up the chassis. Now we can move on to naming the wheels and the body. So I like to keep it simple with the name of the vehicle since I tend to do this quite a bit. Um, so I just have Corvega, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. All right, so here I'm just ensuring that the body mesh is all one piece so that I can set its scale properly as well as the wheels. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees So do location, rotation, and scale for the body. And then we'll select all of the wheels and we will just select rotation and scale for those. And we're good to go. We select everything now. We control P to parent the wheels to the body. And now we're ready to export. Just checking everything over, we file. Export is an FBX selected objects mesh. I go into geometry and I always select faces just so that Unreal doesn't complain. And I always uncheck armature for this specific FBX export type because it's just a vehicle and all it needs is the mesh. Great, so we are now ready to import it into the Unreal side of things. Hopefully you enjoyed the process. It's not too hard to get down. Once you get it, you can repeat it for many other vehicles. So I will see you on the Unreal side. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.